So you look at this picture and you probably don't think of this person as being an athlete. This was me at 12 years old. Uh, my parents didn't have the money to bring me into town to do anything like take basketball camps or volleyball camps or anything like that. Um, I surely didn't want to do anything active. If, you, if I was anything that included a drop of sweat, I would avoid it. I absolutely hated running for the most part. Even though the mile didn't bother me when we had to do it for the physical fitness test, I did not enjoy it. Um, so how does a person that's definitely not an athlete but has a little bit of endurance, well, a little bit, maybe a lot of endurance. Um, I had endurance when I was a kid. This is me on my little big wheel, hot wheel bike, but nobody really noticed it as something being different or important or useful or something that could make me an athlete. Um, I could get up in the morning, and mornings I was slow, I'm still slow in the morning, but after about 9 a.m., even as a kid, I go non would go nonstop. I would not even take naps. If my family told me to take a nap, I would say, how long? If it was for 10 minutes, I would go and I would, I would count to 60 10 times. If it was 20 minutes, I would count to 60 20 times. Not the greatest at counting, so sometimes I get lost and have to double count. But then I'd get out of bed and say, okay, am I done with my nap now? I was the last person to go to bed in the house. It's kind of an annoying little child that I would just not not get tired ever, go constantly on that. But that was something that people probably just think is an annoying thing for a child, not something that's actually important. That endurance and lack of athleticism put together has actually helped me become an ultramarathon runner. An ultramarathon is anything over 26.2 miles. Most of you are probably familiar with the marathon. You run a marathon, if someone says, how long is it going to take you? You're probably gonna guess within about five minutes if you've trained adequately and are prepared. The ultramarathon's a whole different story. The ultramarathon is anything over that 26.2 miles, usually on dirt trails, often on not the nicest trails, and if you run some of our local races, we know not always well-marked trails, and that's kind of what makes it fun, actually. You go out, you run, and you have a good time. The one thing is they do feed you, though. They have aid stations every so often, and you get to eat whatever you want to eat at these aid stations, and then you run to the next one, and even sometimes you get your friends to come along if they're long enough. If they're 50 miles or over, you often get a pacer. And if the 50 miles is difficult enough, you get a pacer to run with you the last half. When you're kind of goofy and crazy and need someone along with you to make sure that you don't go get lost in the woods, or if you think you see a witch in the woods, that they tell you it's not really a witch, and you just stay on the trail, you'll be okay. Uh, there aren't really skulls over. That's the last thing I saw. I saw skulls on my last race, and I thought someone was like doing bad things to animals, and they weren't. Um, so this belt buckle here, and the one I'm wearing, is from the ultra marathon. I probably had to work the hardest at finishing. It's the Leadville 100 race. Uh, most of the race is done at over 10,000 feet. Uh, that 100-miler race took me a long time to finish. In fact, it took me two tries. So when I tell my students, I also teach calculus, if something's hard, that it's okay. And also, if you don't succeed at something, to try again. This will be a little bit of my story in terms of how I got there. Someone who didn't like running to someone who likes these events and even something that you fail at the first time. So I could give you some kind of an equation. I could tell you run 70 miles a week for so many weeks, run in the day at night, run in the day, run in the morning, eat this food, but that's not what I'm going to do today. Giving you that kind of equation, we can all read books, we can get those stories from, but there's something special that happens in the ultra running community and that happens with when I think you do anything that's hard, that's beyond what you think your limits are, whatever you think those limits may be. And this running equation has to do with community. Community is what got me here. It's what gets me to the finish lines when it's early in the morning and I don't want to get up. It's what gets me to the end of the finish line when I'm crying or yelling at people and not wanting to finish. Um, the buddy system is the most important part of this running equation. Uh, three of my best running partners, or my three running partners that really make what running is to me a community. Those three people are Steve Stender. Uh, if you read any of the barefoot running stuff, he's a barefoot runner. When I first moved to Omaha, I ran marathons and only marathons, and I ran to get faster and then I got hurt. I actually got a stress fracture and wasn't able to do that any longer, so that's why I switched the trails. Uh, but Steve's ran a million miles with me. Steve has ran 
50 miles around Lake Zerinsky with me. Steve has ran crazy hours with me. He is the person that has pushed me along there to get faster. So in my core group of people, there's the people that help you get faster, that encourage you to get faster. He is the one that said, Angie, sometime you need to go win a race. Sometime you need to go do well and actually push yourself harder because you run the same speed when you trained with me as when you race the races. On that picture, there was also a girl named uh, Kim Moore. I've only known her for about uh, three months. She posted something on Facebook and she said, does anyone want to pace me at my 100K, meaning kind of be that helper, take care of her, and you get to go to a football game. So I got to go, would get to go to a football game and run, two of my favorite things to do. I emailed her back and I said, I know you don't know me, but I think I just won the Pacer lottery if you really want someone to come along with you to Denver and get to run with you and pace you. And even though I've barely known her, Kim is my rock for pushing myself to do harder things and things I never thought I'd be able to do. Um, Kim has gotten me out in the cold. I do not run in cold. I do not run in the dark. Kim has gotten me to run in the cold and the dark almost every day this year. Not in the morning, but cold and the dark. Not too many things at once. So have that person in your community. Look for that person that pushes you to do things that you don't think you like to do. The last person on the picture is my friend Eric Schelker, and he actually started out as someone the first time we ran together, he couldn't barely finish a two-mile run with me. Uh, he was struggling. He didn't like it. He really is like, why are you even asking me to do a two-mile run with you if you don't like it? And just yesterday, we ran eight and a half miles outside, and if you know it's here, it's about 16 degrees yesterday. It was cold. He's now training for his first full, mar full marathon. What he does as part of my community is he inspires me to finish. If there's a race that I'm wanting to quit, like a couple weeks ago I did a race after one three-mile loop, I was done. I was like, I don't want to do this. It's cold. I'm tired. I had a race a few weeks ago. But I know he's there watching me. So as you build your community, you need people of all different levels and of all different types to help keep you going. They're not the only three people that make up our community. In fact, I'm wearing a shirt, and many of the people in the front row are wearing Greater Omaha Area Trail Runner shirts. And the goats are what changed my life and have been an integral part of this uh, running equation. And with that running equation, and once you pick your buddy system, you find those types of people that inspire you to go further and inspire you to help others and do good things, is to have regular meetings with them. This might seem like a silly picture, but it's meant to be that. Um, every Tuesdays in the summer, we often meet um, at Tranquility and go for runs, anywhere from three miles to 10 miles. Some people walk. Some people are people that have qualified for Olympic trials, all in the same place. We meet regularly. It not only gives you accountability, but it develops friendships. This was a run where we stopped and we were spitting cherries that we had found just because it was funny and taking pictures. So by meeting regularly, whether it's with your running group or your calculus group, as my students know, I have them meet every day before class to develop those friendships and that accountability. Talk to strangers. How do I meet those people that are willing to run 50 miles for fun without it being a race around Lake Zerinsky with me? How do I meet people who are willing to go out when it's freezing cold or push me out when I don't want I want to stay home? I have a friend who's in the audience who actually bought me a hat this winter and said, buying you this hat, you need to wear it. You need to make sure that you go out in the cold. Well, you do talk to strangers. You have to put yourself out there. I met uh, two of the three people I told you about just on Facebook posts. One I was looking, Steve, I was looking for someone who didn't run at 5 a.m., ran in the evenings, and Kim wrote that post looking for a friend to pace her. This race is something that was very special to me. The man next to me is a man named Jeff. Uh, it was my second 50K, so 31 miles. And um, Jeff and I were doing this race, and I had started out first 50K in Kansas, not too bad, nice flat land. This 50K was in the mountains. I had no clue what it was about. I got signed up for it, peer pressure, which I'll talk about a little bit later also. Peer pressure really will get you to do crazy things. I was alone on this mountain, I cl climbing up. I had never climbed at elevation. I was pretty much crying all the way up. I was crying down because I was falling down, going down. I was all by myself. I didn't know if I was on course or not. And Jeff, I saw him, and I'm finally like, human, 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 I can run with someone. So I ran with Jeff for a little while. Then I decided I'd go uphill and run some more on my own. And he caught me again, and we kept doing this for a little while. And finally he said, do you mind if we run together? And that running together is what got me to finish that race. We ran most of the end of that race together, two strangers who talked, shared conversations, did something hard where we both wanted to quit together. 
Another important thing about this is 50Ks can sometimes take four hours, five hours. This one took nine and a half hours to finish, and I thought I was moving decent speed on this one, so that was a very, very hard race that I probably wouldn't have been able to finish without this community. Also in the ultra running community, and especially here in Omaha, you'll find people who peer pressure you, just like that last race I got peer pressured into. Um, my very first 50K I was peer pressured into doing by my student, uh, the person in the red, white, and blue shorts next to me there. He messaged me about two days before his 50K and said, do you want your student to finish a 50K before you? And I was like, no. So I got up at midnight, couldn't sleep, and signed up for this 50K. And that spiraled into a whole lot of other races and kind of a whole other lifestyle there. This day, we're actually running at the Dizzy Goat, which is a local three, six, or 12-hour race uh, where the community comes together and brings everyone from walkers to very fast runners in. And that was also a special day because it was the first day I actually pushed myself and actually won the female race. The person who was second was the other female I told you about, uh, Kim Moore. I didn't know her at the time, the girl that I paced, and, but I knew she was tough as nails. I knew that I couldn't stop and I had to keep going because this tough as nails person who would later be my friend was someone who was right on my tail. And so when you get all those things together, then Try to think about something you and that community can do that's an impossible goal. For me, it was finishing Leadville. When I signed up for this Leadville race, the one I'm wearing the buck belt buckle for, the first time, kind of signed up as almost a joke, like I'll sign up for it, probably won't finish. And that's kind of the attitude I had at first, and I didn't finish the first time. So make sure your attitude's there with you too. Uh, when I went there that first time, that cold hit me, I was too slow to make the cutoffs, and they literally drive up to you in a truck and say, ma'am, you're too slow, you need to get in the vehicle. And I had ran over 70 miles, and you have to get in the vehicle, you're done. They're very strict on their cutoffs, and most of this race is at over 10,000 feet, um, with the biggest hurdle being um, a double kind of climb going from 9,500 feet to 12,500 feet in about three miles. You go up the mountain, down the mountain, then you go back up the mountain and down the mountain again. So second time last year, I decided to do this impossible goal one more time with another group of people. We are missing one of my other pacers here in this picture. He was actually already waiting to pick me up at the next aid station. So they're every aid, not pick me up, at the next aid station, they go and they get you food, take your headlamp, change your clothes if they need to, pop your blisters if they need to. It's not a glorious task to do. They're there to take care of you and drive every about 10 to 13 miles to make sure that you're okay. So we set off with impossible goals, something I had failed at before, but they gave up their weekend. They flew in, they drove in for this, drove in for this. And this is a picture uh, that my friend Bruce took of me suffering, basically. I'm going up Hope Pass, that steep climb for the second time, but these people in this community were willing to suffer with me. Uh, Stop took a picture. Not only you notice that he took a picture, but I have nothing on my back. They can mule for you at Leadville, which means they can carry all your goods. So he is going up a mountain, climbing it himself, talking to me, telling stories, because I like to be told stories, and then stops to make sure that we don't forget uh, what has happened here. When you, we get to the top, these people are willing to smile and celebrate with you. Excited for the baby steps. The race was not over. It's about 55 miles into the race. Uh, but Bruce made sure to stop and take a picture. Also note the clothing change. Last, the last slide, I had on shorts and a tank top. This slide, I am covered with all of Bruce's clothes because I probably forgot my own. It happens sometimes. And there are also llamas in the back of the picture. Uh, only humans and llamas can reach the top of this mountain because you cannot get any even ATV vehicles up there. They have to drive the supplies up or bring the supplies up with llamas. So we were celebrating at the top, being at the top. And these same people will be there to celebrate you, with you. So this was a really tough race. And I'll tell you why in the next picture. Look at the time on that clock. 29 hours, 51 minutes, and 37 seconds. Guess how long we had to finish this race? 30 hours. 30 hours was the cutoff. 30 hours was you don't finish. You don't get one of these buckles or a finisher's jacket. You're done, sorry, see you later. 30 hours and two seconds, you don't finish. And so they had to work very hard as a community. They drove there, they took their weekend, and not only that, but we had um, coming into the last aid station with about a half marathon, 13.1 miles left. And I get there and we had to sprint in. So people come in the woods and say, you've got to sprint. It's the only way you can make it in. So we made that cutoff, barely made that time cutoff. 
We get there, nobody's there. My next pacer, not there. Like, we have no idea where they are. So one of my pacers had to take the next leg, totally never ran that far in his life, had to take the next leg of that race with me and just said, okay, I'm gonna grab food, we're going, because we didn't have any extra time. Then later they found us, and when they found us, um, during that med race, one of the, my pacers whispered to my other pacer and I said, he did not just say what I think you said, did he? And he's like, yep, we have to run the last seven miles. You have ran, walked 93 miles, and someone tells you you have to run se seven more miles, including uphills and downhills. These people, this community took care of me. They did not let me stop. They did not listen to me when I said I couldn't do that hill. And they actually, I fell flat on my face one of the times. They picked me up and threw me back out and said, you're not hurt, you need to finish this. <laughs> and not only was the community that was there, there that helped me, but the community in Omaha, the GOATS, the Greater Omaha Trail, Trail Runners, brought this person who was never an athlete, didn't think I could do this, never dreamed of doing this. Even when I started running, I still never thought I could do this or finish this race. They were there texting, making sure everything was okay, Facebooking, posting. It was that community that helped me to get to that next mile. And since then, that was in August. Oops. Since then, I did my last 100 miler this January in 23 hours and 17 minutes. Uh, the other female in the picture right next to me is my friend Kim. She actually finished her first 100 miler that day also. You can also notice the difference in time depending on whether you're in a mountain or not. You take away the mountains and it's a whole lot easier and a lot better. Um, and plus, the, your pacers didn't have to drive. But this community goes with you, takes care of you, helps you do something. So whatever it is, that you decide to do, I encourage you to find that community, talk to strangers, build that community, work together, whether it's running, whether you're in my calculus class, or whatever dream or something you have that you thought you might not even like, to push yourself outside of that comfort zone and try something new. The next thing I'm trying right now is swimming. Uh, I don't like to put water in my face, even in the shower, much less the pool but now I've finally gotten a few swimming lessons and I'm hoping to learn how to do that. So anything, even if you think you don't like it, if you think you don't like math, if you think you don't like running, they're two things most people hate, whatever it might be, try it and surround yourself with the right people and you probably will be able to do things that you never imagined. Thank you.